Hey friends, so this past week I attended a conference, a virtual conference called SoloCon. It was their very first one and it was for solopreneurs who are doing purpose-driven work and their, their phrase was, you are meant for more than the lonely hustle. You know, just because you're a solopreneur, you know, doing things from your own personal story doesn't mean that you can't work with other people and connect with other people. You aren't meant to be doing this all alone. We are meant for connection and we can do so much more together. And so this conference, oh, was so good. So many good main speakers and workshops we got to choose from. Um, and I have so many more workshops I get to go back and watch later because I was a VIP. Cause, okay, listen to this. So I paid for my ticket and um, just a regular ticket, and then they decided to make the conference free. Free! And so they messaged me and, um, you know, they offered to either give me a refund or upgrade me to VIP, and I decided to do uh, the VIP so I could get some extra Q&A things, and because of that they sent me this swag box, this hefty swag box. So in this video, I'm going to first unbox this for you. There's a lot of cool things inside. Um, and share some of my key takeaways from this conference. I was gonna make it more structured, but I decided I'm just gonna kinda read through my notes and share some of some of these little wisdom nuggets, this good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited and I'm, I almost can't wait to just get through this video so that I can start implementing some of these things that I've learned and today instead of hot chocolate your girl has a monster energy drink because this morning um i had a coaching call and then i wanted to record this video and then tonight i'm going to be uh doing a little happy hour call with some of the people that attended the conference and i'm so excited made some good connections excited to get to know some more solopreneurs who are doing some awesome work so Let's get into this. This is gonna be kind of a long video because I just wanna share, I'm just so excited. I've learned so many good things. I took lots of notes. So I wanna sh share some of my, my highlights and big key takeaways from all these sessions and workshops. So much good stuff. So I've put timestamps down below. Um, so if you don't wanna watch the whole thing or just wanna watch pieces, um, you can look at what the topics are at different times in the video. So let's first take a look at what they sent me. Now, the founder of this conference, Harris III, um, a little bit of this background, he uh, is a magician and he also started this conference called Story and now SoloCon, but he's all about uh, just filling you with wonder from his magic to just wanting to wow you by just giving you so much more than you even expected and all kinds of surprises and Oh, I love that mindset and I'm trying to find ways to do that in my own coaching too. Um, pen pal coach, check it out. So let's look at what's inside a hat. And I'm so excited because I've been wanting a baseball cap because I don't have one and I feel like that's an essential thing to have. And now I have this cool one that says mad because let's see here. I think he writes about it. So he, in this letter he wrote, have I gone mad? I love that famous scene from Lewis Carroll's masterpiece where Alice, fresh back from a trip to Wonderland, inquires about her state of mind. Have you ever wondered that about yourself and your entrepreneurial journey? I have. There have been so many chapters in my own story where I've laid in bed at night wondering what in the world I was thinking when choosing to walk down this path of starting my own business. Am I crazy for believing this was possible? Was I out of my mind to give this a shot? Have I gone mad? To those questions, I will say this to you, my fellow entrepreneurs. Yes, you are crazy. You have gone mad. But in the words of Alice's father, I'll tell you a secret. All the best ones are. So now I have this hat to remind me of that quote. Oh, I have clippies in my hair. There we go. Got a little journal. Okay, guys. There are three books inside of here. Okay, so first we've got brand new book from Seth Godin, The Practice, Shipping Creative Work. I love books, I'm so excited. Seth Godin was there, he spoke to us and I got to even do a Q&A with him. We have 
this print that says you were made for more than the lonely hustle. And then we have Harris's book, the founder of the conference. And I'm so excited because this has been on my wish list since it came out. Now I have it. Thank you so much, Harris. The Wonder Switch. I'm so excited to read this. By the way, they also gave away lots of prizes at the end of the conference. You got different entries by how much you were participating and I won one of the prizes. I got an online course from Harris. I think it's like called the Wonder Masterclass. So from him and around these same kind of topics and I'm super excited to read this book and go through his course. I've heard that it's all really really good and i'm excited we have okay so i follow brad montague on um social media and i saw these things that he had posted now i'm excited to have one so um he he has this thing called be a better grown-up and this says as a member of the society for better grown-ups i do solemnly pinky promise to grow and help others grow laugh and help others laugh and especially fly and help others fly so there's this little pin in here it says society for better grown-ups. Then we've got pocket lattes that I will be giving to my husband because I don't like coffee. <laughs> Ready to eat coffee. I'm so curious what this even is like. It's gluten-free though. Hey, I'm gluten-free. We've got some stickers only with, I thought I saw another one. We got this deck of playing cards from Harris the Third, storyteller and illusionist. And it's really, I opened this already, it's really cool looking. Look at these black and gold, classy, very classy. Look at these, very classy. We've got a Mr. Pen pencil sharpener and a pencil that says magic pencil. We have this little container of matches and let's see here may these matches from river birch candles remind you the light that this world needs that spark that aha moment can happen in a blink with the potential to start a wildfire of possibility every candle and match set they sell donates a meal to those in need through feeding america that's cool and finally we've got one more book look at this hefty book so this says this is volume two of I Am A Creator, 15 True Stories of Remarkable People Earning a Living Doing What They Love. Look at those pictures. So there is the swag box. I am super excited about all of these books. I love books so much. Mm. The way to my heart okay so now let's get into some of my key takeaways i'm gonna kind of go through some of my notes look all of these notes front and back such good stuff and i also i spent some time i put all of my main key takeaways that i like the most like applicable ones i wanted to make sure to remember all in this sheet so I can have all, so I don't have to like keep sorting through all my notes to find some of the main things I wanted to remember as I'm working on courses and signature talks and my content and all of the good things. So, okay. So first we had the pre-conference talk that was for VIPs um, with Kevin Carell. And uh, he was talking about pay attention to your intention. If your intention is to serve, then serve. Don't be transactional, be transformational. Mm. He was such a good way at wording things. He said how as entrepreneurs, we need to be working from an abundant mindset instead of a scarcity mindset. And then he shared this quote from, apparently had a conversation with Angela Duckworth. And if you don't know who that is, she has a TED talk that you can go find right now. Um, and a book that I still need to finish reading. I started it from the, I got it from the library and then I had to return it and I never came back to it. But she has this book called Grit. But again, you can go check out her YouTube video right now and I highly recommend that. But from a conversation with her, um, she had apparently said that thriving people, so thriving people have supportive and demanding people in their life. So if you wanna thrive 
and your and not just in your business but in your life if you want to thrive you need to be surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you and who are going to be um uh hold you accountable and challenge you so that you are reaching your full potential that you are continuing to grow and push yourself so thriving people have supportive and demanding people and if you haven't found your people yet just keep looking because they are out there and i if you're someone like me who's had some rough times with some different uh friends in your life i just encourage you don't give up keep searching you know you don't have to put all your trust in people right away you can do just small little steps to kind of test things out but keep seeking out your people who who you can have mutual benefit from and support each other and encourage each other on then in day one session one of the conference uh Harris talked with Allie Worthington, Jeremy Cowart, Carlos Whitaker, and Mark Pimsler. Uh, Allie shared how uh, a lot of her work, how she got through and, and got the success that she had was a whole lot of grit and Google. <laughs> so I appreciated that quote and I think a lot of the people in the audience resonated with that too because first of all, I'm wanting to continue to read that book from Angela Duckworth, Grit. Again, recommending that. Um, and then. Google. I was talking with a lot of other people. Um, <laughs> I think we have this expectation that once once we reach adulthood, you know, we should we we have this picture of people older than us having it all figured out. But the older you get, you start to realize, um, both in yourself and as you're talking to other people, that no one really knows what they're doing. We just you just continue to learn. You kind of fake it till you make it. You you challenge yourself and you just keep learning and now thanks to Google, we have this great resource, all this information at our fingertips. So if you don't know something, you can easily go and learn it just by typing it in Google. Kind of going along with that, she also said how no one feels confident all the time, you know, except for narcissists or, you know, people who have some kind of disconnect there, but most people don't feel confident all the time. And so that can be an encouragement to us to know that it's not just you. So if you're feeling, you know, like an imposter or just struggling to feel confident in whatever you're trying to put out there in the world, just know that that's normal and everybody else is in the same boat with you. We just don't often verbalize it because again, a lot of us are stuck thinking that it's just us. So then it's embarrassing to share it. So then if not, pe if people aren't sharing it, then it just perpetuates this feeling of being alone in this struggle. So I want to tell you right now, if you are lacking confidence in whatever it is you're doing, just know that you are not alone and that that is totally normal. So don't be discouraged, my friend. And then Jeremy shared some good stuff on um, on, I don't even remember what the topic exactly was, but it was creating, whatever you are creating out there, you know, choose your topic, brainstorm, personalize, verify, plan, do it, launch. Um, and he, he, he crammed in like a three hour presentation into 20 minutes. It was amazing. And I was just like scribbling down like crazy. But some key takeaways from that is to look at what's trending. What is universally loved? What are some of your favorite uh, causes, you know, sharing your heart and then asking questions of what if. And then he said this quote of the more you learn technically, the more you can do creatively. So the more that you're learning these technical skills opens you up to more freedom to be able to do things more creatively. So keep learning and, and uh, keep challenging yourself and learning new tools and skills. He also talked about what is your vision and gave some good questions around that. Um, asking the question of is it wanted slash needed? Is this a good idea? And then also things to consider um, your goals, your time, your team, your weaknesses, your budget, the timing. And then one of my favorite things that he said was my biggest strength is knowing my weaknesses really well. Oh, you know, if you've been around here watching my videos or reading my blog, you know that that's my whole big thing. My tagline is know yourself, grow yourself, because the more you understand yourself, how you are wired and the way your mind works, understanding your personality, what your passions are, um, understanding how your past has influenced you, knowing your weaknesses like helps you to, to to be able to identify those roadblocks like you can't move forward if you don't even understand what's blocking you and so oh that was that's so good and so in line with what i talk about here so good and so true and then 
one final thing um, was he said, find your peanut butter. You know, you're the jelly. And, um, you know, another thing that we talk a lot about here, like whenever you are trying to do something, build something, whether in business, building a team around it where, you know, you know your own weaknesses, so you know where you need help or to either hire someone out or just in your own life when you're building, trying to intentionally build a friend group um, to know your own strengths and weaknesses. And, um, you know, sometimes I've talked about this before, too, about how sometimes it's it's good to have people in your life who you do relate to so you don't feel alone in your struggles. But then it's also crucial to have people who are different than you so you're not stuck in this echo chamber, having confirmation bias, but like having people who are going to be challenged you challenging you just by their own nature and having different strengths than you do and you can learn from them and benefit from that. Some of ah, some of my favorite people and friends have been those who um, are very different from me because I've been able to learn and grow from them. Um, And and it's been both ways, right? It's a a mutually beneficial experience because then they learn from my strengths and I learn from their strengths and it's, it's beautiful. So you are the jelly, find your peanut butter. And then Carlos Whitaker came in and dropped all kinds of good truth bombs. They were talking about um, things like race, like having these hard conversations in your business, how to go about it. He was saying how no matter how uncomfortable it feels to have these kinds of conversations, you either face it on purpose (laughs) or you will end up having these kinds of conversations come up accidentally. And so that's why you need to be ready. It's a conversation that needs to happen and it's a nuanced conversation. Um, And he's talking about how we shouldn't shy away from it. You know, for me, um, you know, as this white girl, like I, that's, I mean, not even just in these kinds of topics, but in everything that I do, sometimes I overthink and I'm slow to share things or speak up on things because I'm scared of, you know, what if I do it wrong? Like, what if I do it in a way that, like, even though I'm doing my best, what if it ends up causing more harm than good? Or, you know, so I'm just, I, I know that I'm not alone in this. You just want to help and you want to, um, you know, raise up other voices too and you want to speak up. But, you know, whatever the topic may be, the, 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 the issue that's going on, we need to say something. And um, I love this quote that it says, if you allow your humanity to rise, people are going to see it. You know, and, and that really connected with me of, of someone who's overthinking it and I don't want to come across in the wrong way, but people are going to see your heart. Um, and he said how all people are asking of you is to listen, to understand. So when in doubt, just listen. You know, like I said, raise up other voices, give them a platform, a space to, you know, sharing their content. And he was saying how he went from 35,000 followers on Instagram to 27,000 whenever he spoke up on Instagram, even though he did it in a really kind way. And, um, but he said that he's going to err on the right side of history. And so he said, don't be scared. Uh, your, your people are going to stick around and, more of those who need to hear this message will find you. And so then his Instagram then began to grow with the right kind of people who had those same similar values and were on board with that and needed to hear that message and were lined up with that kind of message. And then Harris joined in saying, the way around the messiness is through. Okay, so then to end out session one, the most inspiring thing happened. So Harris III had told the story before at different events and uh, apparently in his book too. But um, so there's this story where when, so he started out as an illusionist, just doing performances like that. And one time he went to a school so that he could promote his, you know, bigger show later that night or something. And uh, the principal talked to him and was like, Uh, you do tricks, right? You know, you're a uh, magician. And um, he said that a lot of the students there at the school, they'd been tricked 
by different things in their lives, and he asked Harris if he could share some of his personal story because he thinks that that might help some of these students who are going through hard things and and being tricked into these um, horrible things and you know, Harris was thinking like, I'm, I'm just an illusionist. Like I can't, I'm an entertainer. Um, but he agreed to it. And so, uh, he did his performance and he has this act where he's in a straight jacket and he escapes from it and he's holding up the straight jacket and he starts sharing his own personal story and the hard things that he's gone through and is just vulnerable up there on that stage, uh, for the first time. And, and shares all these things and after his performance this girl comes up to him and drops a razor blade into his hand um you know because through his performance he he afterwards had talked about how we all have straight jackets in our lives these things that are holding us back but we can escape them and so this girl shared some of her story and and his his talk on that helped her believe and have hope that she can um, escape from from this straitjacket, these these razor blades that she had been used to 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 cut herself, and um, and you know just this incredible story where it, it it crazy impacted her, and and then her sharing that impacted him, and um, but the cool part is is that just recently, uh, he had shared this story again on his Instagram, and uh, this girl DM'd her and was like, I know you probably you do a lot of these performances, so I don't know if. I'm the person that you were talking about, but I, you know, remember I came up to you and, and, and gave you my razor blades. And so they got to connect all these years later and share the impact that they had on each other. And she is now a counselor helping other people. And who I don't think there was a single dry eye in that virtual room. And um, because then he surprised us by having her come on um, the, the live talk with him. And it was the, and she, you know, he had asked her permission first, and it was their first time talking live since that day back in, you know, like 2013 or something. And, um, man, it was just a crazy powerful moment. And he used that to share how, you know, us sharing our stories and, um, you know, this, this purpose driven work that we're doing is impacting people and can have such impact. And it was the perfect thing to then go into um, my first workshop, which was with Allison Fallon. And I was, I was most excited uh, for this one because I knew her and I knew her work and I just, I adore her. And her workshop was about um, writing your story. And she talked about the power of writing your story, even if you're not gonna publish it, but just even for your own sake and your, um, ways to, to process things. She used uh, the term metabolize. It helps you to metabolize your life. Writing is one of the most powerful tools for personal transformation. And she talked about how, you know, taking a step back through writing, you know, it kind of to write it all down and then look at it from this, you know, a, a distance uh, can help you see where you were playing small or maybe making some wrong decisions. It can help you uh, discover some things that you might not have seen before had you not written it down and then, you know, given it some space. And even the act of writing it and then looking at how you wrote about it can give you some insight into where you're at. It's like, oh, I was using a much harsher tone than I even realized or I was talking about or the way that I was talking about this or that or seeing where there were um, you know, it just helps us to see things from a different perspective to give us that kind of distance to then look at it from that perspective is just so helpful for self-awareness and personal transformation. And then she talked about how the experience of sharing her story and safe relationships and safe relationships helped her to feel seen, heard, known, and validated. And she said how what makes a story interesting isn't the details but it's about what the person has overcome and how it has transformed them. And so for me, this has been a huge encouragement both in, you know, because through my writing and sharing things with you, I've, uh, and last year, my, my one word focus, and you can learn about that by clicking uh, the link above, but uh, my one word focus was story because I wanted to live 
a story worth reading. And so I've been wanting to get better at sharing my own story, even though it's hard and it's scary and it's vulnerable, but the, the posts and the videos that I have been the most vulnerable are the ones that have actually been the most viewed and, and I've gotten the most comments on of it helping other people. And so there is such power in sharing our stories with each other so we don't feel alone. And um, it, it just creates this feeling of safety to know that other people have been going through this too. So then we had session two where we had speakers Sarah Stork, uh, Kevin Jennings, and then also uh, John Butcher, I think is how you pronounce it, Ben Stewart, uh, Janelle Traster, and Ken Black all shared some things. You know, Sarah was sharing about uh, your personal brand and your passion and uh, showing your passion and purpose and everything that you do. And I love this quote where she said, it's that which is personal that can positively change the world. Because she shared uh, this whole thing on how, you know, there's this, this quote that's, you know, it's not personal, it's just business. And so she shared how it is all personal and it needs to be personal and it is the personal that has the the most positive impact on the world and then kevin jennings uh, i'll share more on him later because i did a uh, i participated in a workshop with him but one of my key takeaways from that was he said view what you do as medicine you know especially someone like me who like i just want to help people but i have a hard time m like marketing and promoting myself because i don't want to be salesy and i just i just to help people for free but i gotta make money so i can keep doing what i'm doing but he talks about how we need to be promoting our work because if we believe in this like it would be uh the opposite of loving to to keep it from people and so to view what you do as medicine to see like this is the, the problems that people are having and i have something that can help and so if that's true like, why wouldn't you put that out there into the world? So that was very encouraging for me to hear. And then Ken Black was dropping all kinds of good truth bombs, but he talked about how it's not about the mountain, it's about the compass. And then he also says how you are the compass. And then he says that we should have a solid vision, but a flexible path. And he said when we lack vision, that's often when we lack fulfillment. Then we got into the workshop with Kevin Jennings and oh, so much good stuff. So this was mainly about uh, email and social media marketing. Um, and he so kindly answered one of my questions because I've, I, I'm someone who like here for years, I've been giving so much away for free and I, I struggled to know what should be free and what should I charge for. And I just, I just want to help people. But like I said, like I need to be making money so that I can afford to keep doing this and it's the reality of the more money I make the more people I can help and so I asked him that question of how do you know what to give away for free and what to charge for and he said that we should be giving away the why and the what but then charging for the how you're charging for you know the implementation so you know through my videos and my blog and these things that I'm giving away for free, I'm helping to kind of diagnose the problem and and show why things are important and, um, you know, showing the what, but he says that then you should be charging for the how. Courses can be the telling someone how to do something or how I did it, you know, whatever process I used, how I ended up being successful in this. Um, and showing you how to do it. And then through my coaching, I am uh, doing it with you. Which by the way, again, uh, I have a coaching business, penpalcoach.com. I help people learn more about themselves and then apply that so that they can reach their goals and choose meaningful goals in the first place. The coaching is through email and then there's some special things and regular postcards and all kinds of goodies that I send you in the mail to just make it, I mean, who doesn't like mail? You know, when I'm just tired of getting junk mail and bills all the time, but I get so excited when I get mail, even if it's like, <laughs> an Amazon package or something that I ordered myself that I needed like toothpaste or something. It's just so exciting to get mail. And so if you are someone who's needing help, maybe you're a, a, a creative person or a geek who is needing some assistance and these, these big dreams that you have, these things that have been on your heart, I would 
oh, this is just like my favorite thing. I just love helping people gain that confidence and that clarity to finally go after these things that you've been feeling the strong desire to do, but you have these obstacles in the way. I want to help you um, in personalized ways because we are not cookie cutter people. And so helping you figure out what works and doesn't work for you. So anyways, yeah, there was a lot of good, helpful, practical things that I learned from his workshop. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, and then on to general session three. We had Todd Henry, Steve Chaparro, uh, Mark Pimsler, and Judy Holler all shared in this session. Uh, Todd is the author of The Motivation Code, and I'm so excited to read this book. I took the free online assessment, but it doesn't, you have to read the book in order to get the descriptions, and so I'm excited to look into that. I mean, come on, like, motivation and personality assessments, you know that's my jam, so I'm excited to look into that, and I'm sure I will do a whole video just on that or, or including that. He talked about how don't wish you were motivated, you can bring motivation into your work, and how you do that is that you have to figure out what uniquely drives you because again hello we are all very different people so we need different things and again like i check out that book the motivation code and if you are wanting someone to help walk through that with you maybe we can even read that book together um or i have a whole lot of resources that i that i share with my clients um but if you're needing someone to help you kind of learn more about yourself, learn about your personality, how you're wired, what motivates you personally. If you're struggling with motivation, but you have these big dreams, I would love to help you out with that. And then we have Steve, and he shared some really good stuff once again on this, this concept of self-awareness. Um, he called it the superpower of self-awareness. And he talked about how we shouldn't blame others for not understanding our vision. You know, it's it's uh, we should be considering it as a moment to become better communicators, and that's so good and applicable for all of our relationships and conversations. You know, I've seen that time and time again where people are just like not understanding each other, and then they get frustrated. Um, but you know, you shouldn't be blaming the other person or assuming like, oh, they're just not smart enough or whatever. Like, no, you need to be taking a look back at yourself and seeing it as an opportunity to learn how to communicate your vision or your ideas or your thoughts better um, or differently. Because again, we are all different people. And you know, it's, it's think of it as we're all speaking different languages. And so it's not fair of you to, uh, you know, be speaking English when they actually only speak Spanish or, you know, whatever the language may be. So to communicate, and I'm not meaning literally, I mean literally too, but, I'm meaning metaphorically here of people need different ways of um, to be able to receive things well and so to learn to speak in their language, to recognize that people don't see things and understand things and word things the way that you do so we can become better communicators, better people, better friends, better co-workers, better bosses by learning to speak other people's language and communicate things in those different ways based on our audience. And then Mark Pimsler came in again sharing some really good stuff. He talked about how imposter syndrome comes from us thinking that we have to be superhuman when we feel subhuman, but we are really somewhere in between, right? We're not superhuman and we shouldn't expect ourselves to be superhuman, but we also aren't subhuman. We're just human. We're all just humans out here, imperfect beings, just trying to do our best. And he talked about how, you know, sometimes those who have trouble receiving compliments and really taking it to heart is because we see ourselves as we have this public self and then we have this private self, the part that people aren't seeing, and we are aware of this. And so we assume that because they are complimenting the public self, that we can't really take that compliment fully to heart because do they really know the real us? And would they still give us that compliment if they knew the real us? And then he shared some really good stuff on shame and guilt. And I've heard this uh, talked about before. I think you know, definitely check out Brene Brown's work because she has done all kinds of good research on shame. But he highlighted that how um, guilt is specific behaviors 
um, it's adaptive and pro-social, it's, uh, it's uh, thinking I did something bad, whereas shame is I am someone bad. The shame takes on this identity. It's antisocial because, you know, with guilt, when you feel guilt from having these bad um, immoral impulses, guilt helps you to not do it, <laughs> right? So guilt can be helpful. You know, it's, it's this helpful conviction, but shame is making it into a sense of identity, of I am someone bad instead of I, I, you know, I messed up, I did this thing, but thinking it more of as I am a failure, I, I am a bad person. And so, you know, he talked about all kinds of good things around that. And then Judy Holler, the master improv lady, she shared some really great wisdom. She talked about how if people are already talking, because they are, people are gonna talk about you. If people are already talking, let's give them something to talk about. And she shared some really great things about how you have to be willing to get uncomfortable and face failure and redefine your relationship with failure. She talked about how with failure, you're one step closer to actually getting it right. You're gonna mess up, you're gonna fail, but you can't let those slip ups stop you. And she talks about this thing called the fear scientist. We need to be fear scientist and, and, and seeing it as just an experiment because when you think of it as an experiment you're entering with curiosity and you can't mess up when it's an experiment because with a scientist you know you have this hypothesis and you're trying a certain way of doing things but it's it's beneficial to the experiment to find out not just what's working but what's not working or, or not just what um, you know we thought would happen but when things go differently you know that's not a failure but it helps us to learn so um, you know, when we think of it as an experiment, it helps us, again, kind of what uh, Mark was saying earlier of, of not seeing it as, I am a bad person, I am, a, a, you know, a failure, I made these mistakes, but thinking of it as, these were learning opportunities, like this is helping me get closer to what I want. It's getting out of your comfort zone on purpose, and she talked about how courage is muscle so therefore we need to be doing something scary every day training ourselves to be more comfortable with being uncomfortable and that was just so good for me um check out my videos i have two for you in the description down below where i talked about how my my focus for 2021 is make mistakes because i'm trying to shift my mindset from you know, using mistakes to beat myself up and feel like I'm a failure, but instead shifting my mindset to celebrate mistakes. Because if I'm making mistakes, then that means that I'm actually taking action and I'm taking risks and I'm facing my fears. And that is something to be praised. That is something to be celebrated. So with that, and then I did an update recently on how that's going and things I've been learning. So you can check out those two videos down below and you can subscribe to my channel to, to kind of come along with me on this journey. I'm doing vlogs throughout. I'm doing a quarterly vlog on how that's going and what I'm doing and then sharing more videos along the way of these different things that I'm working on sharing my fail my failures and my mistakes along the way so you can see the ups and the downs of this kind of journey because a lot of people you know in this personal development niche they're they're just they're only showing you the after which is you know good for marketing so you know you're hiring someone that actually is the 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 after that you are tr like trying to get to but i think it can sometimes be damaging and unhelpful when we see these people and only the good parts, the highlight reel, the after, when really it's a continuous journey. Growth is not linear. There's so many ups and downs. Like even when you've mastered something, there are still, you know, we're not perfect. We're not robots. Things are messy and that's okay. And so I wanted to share my journey with you so you can see what it's like and, and know that, you know, I'm not just telling you these things, but I've actually been going through it myself. And there are lots of mistakes along the way. That is normal. That is a part of the process. So come along with me and let's get uncomfortable together. <laughs> let's learn to get comfortable with being 
uncomfortable and I don't know about you but even just now that kind of brought up some anxiety that's why I'm working on these things and then as a VIP I got to do this happy hour with Harris Judy and Ken um, so some good quotes from that uh, Judy said clarity brings confidence she shared how you need interesting inputs to have interesting outputs and I shared some of that in a vlog too of, of learning that I need to be taking more in letting myself you know part of my creative process is needing to take in other things to consume like you can't have good ideas to get out there if you or like to things to think on if you're not even putting stuff in you know what I'm saying so yeah and then on Friday general session number four we had the Seth Godin like one of if not the most famous blogger out there and some good quotes from him um, if we are doing good work, we are making change happen. Uh, he also said the secret is not claiming more attention, it's gaining more trust, you know, in talking about our businesses and things that we're doing. And he shared so much good, helpful advice, but one thing I wanted to focus on that really resonated with me was um, he said, higher altitude doesn't make a plane fly better. And he's talking about how if you're at the altitude, you want, you know, whatever level of success, whatever level of a following or wherever you're at and like whatever job you're doing, whatever you're wanting to do with your life. Um, if this is like the level that you're wanting, then like, that's great. Like you don't have to do more than that. Cause I think we have, especially in American culture, we always have this, this pressure to do more, be more, you know, you gotta keep climbing that ladder. But if you're content with like where you're at, like you don't, you don't have to push yourself beyond that because then you start getting into things that are not are not natural and not um, valued by you. So why would you do that? Like when you can have so much contentment at this level of doing things. But he said, but if you are not as high as you want to be, then that's a different story, of course. He said each person approaches the opportunity in front of them with a different metric. And one last takeaway from Seth Godin that I wanted to include um, he was saying, find a small group of people who know you're worth paying extra for. And then here's the part that's applicable to everyone, no matter if you are a business person or not, is that if we want people to be paid well, we should spend more. Like just this concept of like, if it's a value for you to want uh, people, artists, creators, waitresses, servers, you know, what, like if, if we value human life and we want people to have livable wages and we want people to be paid fairly for their work, then we need to be checking ourselves and making sure are we actually spending what we think they're worth <laughs> or are we just trying to be cheap and save money, you know? So pay people what they're worth. Pay beyond that if you can. Pay, pay people well. So there's my little spiel on that. So for these next session and workshop key takeaways I'm kind of kind of I'm gonna roll them all together because a lot of it kind of connects together with Sally Z talking about a wow worthy signature talk and then Ben Stewart gave a lot of good marketing tips and then Susie Moore um, was sharing about uh, storytelling in the media we got some good stuff from Amy Porterfield um, just so many good things on creating a signature talk a signature course and then marketing it all just mm, 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 good stuff that probably might not apply to you unless if you happen to be some kind of business person but feel free to message me and i'll share some more of those key takeaways if you want um i'd love to spread the knowledge spread the wealth of knowledge that i have learned so feel free to reach out so we had sally z sharing about a wow worthy signature talk she just had so many good tips on that you know if you're gonna be speaking at different events um and she said it's not about showing up perfectly um you know but we also can't waste the moment you know that we not even just when you have a talk on stage but when you talk to other people you know you're not wasting the moment but you don't have to show up perfectly you just have to show up and be present so showing up being your full self good stuff and this was all super helpful for me as someone who isn't a natural speaker and um, you know, even doing things like this has been a learning experience, but this is like 
I can redo this, I can refilm this, I can edit this, but when I go live on a stage or on a podcast or whatever, um, live conversations with humans, that has been really hard for me and make sure to subscribe to my channel because I am going to be vlogging through my process of learning to overcome my fears of public speaking and hopefully getting better at improv and react and the words into sentence doing as Lorelai Gilmore said in an episode of Gilmore Girls. Um, and Sally Z, she's so sweetly, hopefully it's okay for me to say this out loud, uh, hopefully you don't change your mind, Sally. Uh, <laughs> but she, I reached out to our Facebook group from the SoloCon um, attendees and I was saying how I'm trying to work on overcoming my fear of public speaking, does anyone need um, more content, you know, more guests for their podcast or their YouTube channel and don't mind having a newbie, uh, you know, to have some mutual benefit there and several people responded and I'm so excited to connect and see if we're a good fit. But Sally Z was one of the ones that reached out and said that, you know, since she is a, a speaker coach, so if you're looking to improve on that, make sure to check her out. I'll put a link down below. Um, but she has a podcast to help help speakers and so she asked me if I would be interested in coming on her podcast to share my experience of trying to overcome my fears of public speaking so I'm really excited about that and I'm really excited to share with you guys along the way like I've already been doing some speaking things this year and I'm trying to do more I'm trying to do at least at least one a month oh my gosh I have so many things even just the next couple weeks these things kept lining up but yeah so I'll share my progress with you guys so subscribe if you want to see my journey it's gonna be a journey <laughs> and the next I had a workshop from Ben Stewart on the 90 day marketing roadmap and I've listened to a webinar from him before and then this workshop man he's just always dropping so much good helpful practical practical advice and so uh, go check him out. I don't want to get into all these little nitty gritty things of of marketing but there's just oh so much good stuff that he covered in this workshop that I am excited to start implementing into my own marketing plan so hopefully you'll start seeing some some better marketing. <laughs> Next in session five, Amy Porterfield spoke, and that's a workshop that I didn't end up watching, but I'm really excited to go back and watch that, but she just dropped so much good, like, whew, super practical uh, information, and man, like, I've watched a lot of, watched and read a lot of content on, you know, all kinds of things, marketing, creating courses, all these different things, but this was just, like, the most practical one that I had ever heard from. So go check out her stuff. Um, but yeah, she was teaching on just some really good helpful content on creating a online course, which was so helpful for me right now because I am in the process, beginning very beginning stages of creating my first course. So you will be hearing more about that along the way. And I'm so excited to implement these things. Mm really good stuff. And then Susie Moore on storytelling in the media. She's been on TV and in these big blogs. And so she was sharing some of her experience and things that she's learned to get in the media and sharing how it's a lot easier than you would expect. You know, you don't have to be an expert. All you need is a story with the capacity to move people. She was talking more about how, you know, people love stories. We see ourselves in every story. It's, you know, from one heart to another. It's the way we can connect with people. And then I love this quote where she said, the most generous thing we can do is share our own story. And then also, you know, as a perfectionist, she said, don't overcomplicate it, let it be easy. <laughs> I think that's some good advice for everything I do in my life. Don't overcomplicate it. I tend to overcomplicate a lot of things. So there you go, if you need to hear that. There you go. But yeah, she shared a lot of helpful information. You can go look her up, Susie Moore, if you're looking to get into the media, get, you know, guest posting, getting on the news. She has a lot of helpful advice on that. So check out her stuff. And then the final session that we have a Kevin again, they had him book into the conference with that VIP pre-conference talk. And then now at the end, and he, he just has such a weight with words and it was so encouraging and inspiring. And he talked about how people want your full self. 
He talks about reverse mentoring, you know, not just mentoring someone younger than you, but also finding someone younger uh, who can show you wonder, you know, because as we get older, we start to lose that sense of wonder. So there's benefit even from this reverse mentoring. And then he gave some encouragement again on, you know, keep seeking that supportive and demanding person that I shared about early, earlier, how thriving people have supportive and demanding people in their lives. And, you know, you'll know who they are because they're the people who keep showing up. And so don't give up on seeking those people, even if you've been burned before, um, just or just found, like struggling to find people who really get you. Just don't give up. Your people are out there. And then he ended out with this quote, work for a cause, not for applause. Live life to express, not to impress. Don't strive to get your presence noticed, but make your absence felt. So there you have it. Those were some of my my key takeaways. And I have this little pretty little purple and black uh, a piece of paper I made with some of my key takeaways of things I'm going to be implementing into my business and my content and my marketing strategy and sharing my story and creating my courses and there's, so there's going to be lots of good things ahead so thank you so much SoloCon 2021 it was the best conference i have ever attended so much like it's such a good balance of inspiration and mindset work but then also getting into good real practical stuff that we can implement right now in our businesses in our lives so good so good so thanks for watching, guys. I hope that something in this also inspired you. I know I was going really fast through a lot of stuff and, and it lacked the context because I was cramming two days worth of good, 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 good stuff into this, however long this video will be. Um, so yeah, I hope something helped. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you, if you notice my shirt, it says, Creative Geeks, have all the fun. If you this shirt is for sale in my shop so if you're a creative geek and you want to celebrate that because you are awesome go check it out it's for sale at therealanna.com slash shop so i hope that was helpful and inspiring and encouraging stay mad my friends keep dreaming big keep going after those things that you feel called to do your creative geek self just keep dreaming big keep taking risks, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, stay mad because the best people are. Until next time, keep it real. Mm -hmm.